The second Sunday of Advent always focuses on John the Baptist. And John the Baptist always focuses on Jesus. That's exactly, that's the way it should be. Okay, he must increase, I must decrease. That's a famous quotation from John the Baptist. So John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know what the first word of Jesus' public preaching was? The first word of our Lord's public preaching. Repent. This was the message of John, and this is the message of Jesus. And what does it mean to repent? To repent means to return. To be returned. To turn back to. We can imagine that Jesus might say something like this. I am the way right? I am the way and the truth and the life. And so Jesus thinks about following him not as a one-time event but as a way. And repent means turn and follow. Not I repented yesterday. That doesn't have a place in the Christian vocabulary. We repent and we keep repenting and our life is a journey of repentance which means to return to return to the Father. So what is the message of John? Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Not long ago, I mentioned the fact that the kingdom was the most prevalent theme of the ministry of our Lord. The kingdom and the kingdom and the kingdom and the kingdom. And Jesus Christ is king. That was Christ the King Sunday when I talked about all of that. So John the Baptist is a voice of one crying out in the desert and the voice carries the word. And so the voice speaks the word and who is the word? John's the voice, Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so John's message is Jesus. John wore clothes made of camel's hair had a leather belt around his waist. The leather belt sounds okay, but the camel's hair and the locusts doesn't sound too good, you know? And it's interesting because basically the point is, and this is the point we need to hear, this is the point that needs to sink into our soul. John was a radical. People would have thought John was a crazy man. He's out there wearing these strange clothes, saying these strange things, eating these strange bugs. What's up with him? But there was something about John that was attractive. There was something about John that was pulling people to him. And so the gospel describes that from all of Judea, from all around, they were going out to him in the desert. And what were they doing? I always imagine, I always see John in my mind's eye, knee deep in the Jordan River. That's how I imagine him, you know. I probably see a a painting or two of him in that place. So they were coming out to John, streams of people from Jerusalem. And there's John standing in the Jordan River and what's happening? What are they doing? They're getting baptized. But something else is happening. If you were paying attention to the gospel, If you're paying attention to me the last year after year after year that we have the second Sunday of Advent. Because they go out to John the Baptist and it says they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. Or another translation might be better for our ear as Catholics as they confessed their sins. They were going to confession to John the Baptist. And what were they preparing for? They were preparing for the coming of Christ. Now, we're in the season of what? What season are we in right now? Don't say shopping season. Okay, what season are we in? We are in Advent. And we're preparing for the coming of Christ. That's what this season is. And you know what this season should entail? This season should entail a good confession a good confession because you know we're preparing we're waiting we're anticipating that's what God through his church through his bride the church gives us this season for now who else was going out there to see him 
just going through the gospel kind of almost line by line here. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he wasn't impressed. He wasn't impressed because like Jesus, John knew that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were all about being seen. And it's, this is, hey, this is the place to be seen. Everybody's going out there. Something's happening out there. And so John essentially rebukes them. And he, he rebukes them in a rather strong language. He says, you brood of vipers. What is a brood? A brood is a bunch of children or a bunch of offspring. You brood of vipers. Now, who is the original viper? Yeah, that's right. From the Garden of Eden. You children of Satan is essentially what John says. So John was not only a radical, he was also kind of, you know, he wasn't dancing around the issues. He was clear, he was concrete, he was challenging. You brood of vipers, who warned you to come from the to flee from the coming wrath. And then he talks about his baptism. He says, produce good fruit as the evidence of your repentance. In other words, if you're going to really repent, then your life needs to change. Because remember, we're walking in this direction and now we're walking in that direction. We have these priorities and now we have those priorities. And so our life is a series of repentance. It's, that's what it's supposed to be. Now, this season, I know it's not shopping season. I know you don't think it's shopping season. I know that's not on your brain at all. I know you're not looking forward to see the olive wood after mass. I know, okay? But you may have heard this question recently. What do you want? What do you want for Christmas, right? Maybe you've asked somebody else that question. Let me ask you, what do you want? What do you want? And we think about this. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as the evidence of your repentance. Good fruit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, that's good fruit. What's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. So John's message is repentance. John's message is Jesus. What do you want? Ask and seek and knock. A few years ago I read a novel by Leo Tolstoy and uh, I used to read a lot more than I read now. I need to get rid of my smartphone. It's destroying my reading habits. But anyway, I read this novel by Leo Tolstoy, Anna Karenna. And some of you have read it or you saw the movie or you're familiar with it a little bit. And I'm going to tell you about one of the characters. And I've told you all this, some of you all this before. You may have heard this. There was a character in this novel. And this whole novel was all about a family and dysfunction and adultery and fidelity and all of that stuff, right? Life. And so in the novel, there was a character named Steva or Steva. And Steva was a likable person. He was a likable, he was a fun guy, right? He got invited to a lot of parties, right? You know, why did the mushroom get invited to a lot of parties? Because he was a fun guy, right? I told that to the eight o'clock crowd last week, okay. Anyway, so Steva was a fun guy. He got invited to a lot of parties, but he was not a good man. He was a bad man. He was a selfish man. He was a superficial man. All of his thoughts were about him. And that's the way he went through life. And so Leo Tolstoy gives us this character. And he has a series of things happen to him. And now he stands in his life at a crossroads. 
And he has two job opportunities. And one job opportunity is in the city, in the big city, near the club, near the casino, near the ball field, near the distractions, near the bars. And then the other job was in the country. And he would be home with his family. And it would be quiet. And he thinks to himself, the novelist Leo Tolstoy is giving us Steve, Steve his thoughts. If I go to the country, I'll start thinking about the shortness of my life. I'll start praying. I'll start preparing myself to meet God. So there he is at a crossroads, going in one direction or the other. In which direction does he go? Which direction does he go? Now, Leo Tolstoy doesn't give us this character in the novel for us to judge him. And we're not given the scribes and the Pharisees in the, in the Gospels to judge them. And Jesus doesn't tell us the story of the Good Samaritan and those things for us. It's for us to examine ourselves. So I stand at a crossroads. Which way am I going? To the noise, to the distractions, or to quiet and solitude? So what is the season of Advent for you? Is it noise and distractions and chaos? Or is it a time to prepare for the coming of Christ? Holy Mother Church gives us this season as a time. And I said last week, it's as if there's a conspiracy in the world to rob us of this time of preparation and anticipation. The gospel, we hear about people going out to the desert, and out in the desert they find John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down. What is good fruit? Joy and peace and patience and kindness and self-control, sobriety, generosity. What is good fruit? Every tree that, tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but one is coming after me mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus comes to baptize us with grace, the grace of repentance, the grace of transformation, the grace of healing. You know that's at work in your soul right now? The grace of God is at work in us, calling us to be prepared, calling us to be transformed. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor. He will gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, if you're not an old-timey wheat farmer, you probably don't know exactly what's happening in those lines of Scripture, so I will break it down as quickly as I can. A threshing floor would have been a hard surface on a hilltop. You would find yourself a big flat stone on a hilltop, and you would get your wheat, and you would take it up to that big flat stone, and that would be your threshing floor, and there you would thresh it. And what does it mean to thresh? You would beat it or you would grind it. And these ears of, or these little kernels of wheat, as they're being threshed on the threshing floor on this stone, they're being broken. And the good is being separated from the bad. The wheat is being separated from the chaff. And the wheat is good and the chaff is bad. And then you take a winnowing fan. You know what a winnowing fan is? You scoop up the wheat and chaff that have been broken and you throw it up in the air. And the wind, the pneuma, which is another word for the spirit, you throw it up and the spirit separates the evil from the good. And the heavy kernels of wheat fall right down and the chaff is blown off by the wind. 
And John the Baptist uses this as an image of what Jesus is going to do to us. He wants to crush us so that the good is separated from the evil. He wants to put us in the desert for a little while so that we look into ourselves. He doesn't want us to be like Steve who's decided not to go to the country. He said, I'm going to the ball game, I'm going to the casino, I'm going to the bar, I'm doing all of those things. I'm not going to be home with my family, I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to prepare. That's what the character did, quite deliberately. He's like he had a conversation with himself. No, I am not going to the country. I am not going to prepare. What about you? It is a season to be prepared for the coming of Christ. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor. He will gather the wheat into the barn and the chaff will be burned. You know what? We want Christ to burn the chaff away from us now. Now. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down. Now let me ask you, what do you want? What do you want in this Advent season? A pure heart? Self-control? A peaceful spirit? Counsel? Strength? Knowledge? Fear of the Lord? Wisdom? Understanding? My brothers and sisters, God has given us this season of Advent. God has given us John the Baptist to call us to be prepared for the coming of Christ. God has given us confession. I pray that you make a good confession this Advent season. A good one. Maybe the best one of your life as you're preparing for the coming of our Savior.